are live. I feel like my daddy, right? He's a DJ. And um from like the 80s. Like, and he would always be like kicking it live. So you know, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm telling my age, like. So um, we've been doing this for a minute, so I'm super excited, LeBray. We are live. We are here. We're excited. Passing time along, Miss LeBray Tyler and Miss Crystal. Hello, hello. Um, thank you so much, um, LeBray. Any quick words of welcome to the crew, to the audience, to our co-hosts out there? Um, just welcome, 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 welcome. Um, we've been on this journey for like a year. We started this baby, I want to say at the start of COVID when, you know, everything was shut down and, um, it was an idea. What, what, what did you put on? You put on recently. I like that. It became a thing. A thing became a whatever. I, I like it. The whole thing right now it was an idea first and then it came to fruition and now it's an actual podcast. So, uh, we decided to 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 make it official. You know, we have bomb conversations all the time. Um, we love drinking wine. So why not combine the two? You know, why not? So um, just tune in. Welcome, everyone. Those who are new. I'm sure my friends already know because we've been telling our friends. We got podcasts coming soon. Got podcasts coming soon a whole year ago. Podcasts coming soon. Now it's here. Now it's here. So welcome. Speaking of, I'm about to like stalk some friends, make sure they support it. <laughs> and I had to move my glass out the frame because I realized I'm a lush. Please don't judge me. I was like, whoa, that's a lot of wine I'm pouring in this glass and I'm going to drink it all. So, LeBre, Le what you drinking tonight? Um, I bought a Riesling. Uh, we got Governor's White in the building. That's her favorite wine in Virginia. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's sold anywhere else, but I know it's definitely in Virginia. And um, the first, when I first tasted it, I was in heaven. I'm like, cause I normally, I'm not like a wine connoisseur. I just like what tastes good. And um, yeah, when I tasted that, um, I'm not gonna be dramatic. I was about to say that, that changed my life. <laughs> but yeah, it's good, it's a good wine. Be dramatic. And I know hopefully we got our, you know, bougie wine drinkers out there in the audience. Um, we are here for it. So please do comment. Give us your opinion. Talk about what you know. I, I see Marcy in the building saying, hey, I know she got some things to talk about wine. And hopefully we'll see her on the show soon. Um, I know we have Mr. Big Exclusive out there in the audience. Shout out to Big Exclusive Podcast. Hopefully you guys are liking, sharing. If you're not, search for him on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. The Big Exclusive Podcast. Um, he's also, a, 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 I think, like a little wine enthusiast. But so what LeBray was talking about is the governor's white, right? So I don't know if anybody can relate. And LeBray, you can relate, right? I started drinking wine, like, when I was, like, sneaking to, you know, 52nd Street in West Philly to, like, the delis and stuff, like, because that was the only place that was served me underage. I don't, hopefully I don't get nobody in trouble for that. Um, but long story short, well, my mom would give me a little sip of, you know, when I first got to the, the drinking age, um, she would give me a little, um, what was it, White Zinfandel. White Zinfandel was the wine that I felt like was just circulating at every black barbecue, right? I, I might be wrong, but that's just from my experience. So I grew up at a very early age. My mom was also a wine drinker. You know, she loved a good Pinot Noir, right? So I would sip here, sip there. And, and the older I got, I, I started to like try new wines. Um, different people would recommend, you know, the men love taking you on nice dates and recommending a good wine, right? So um, I got used to or got accustomed to like the palette that you know i feel like fits for me and i moved down here to virginia and discovered this williamsburg wine the governor's wife lebray you know i tra i travel with this baby right i take this wine everywhere it's like nine dollars total wine and i travel everywhere with this wine because i'm not really a riesling fan like over, over over time i would drink you know the pinot noirs i, I did the merlots um way 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 too much for me the calves um now i'm on shiraz when it comes to the red but this governor's white is like the only riesling that i would like jump for joy so if you're looking for a good white i'm talking about a real crisp white governor's white williamsburg wine is bomb diggity i've taken it to philly <laughs> i've given it to all my friends and the brazen attic right <laughs> yes i i have officially become an addict you know and, and i don't want to get clean 
<laughs> so before we jump into some conversation, because we passed some time a while, I want to thank y'all for joining the first show. Like we love talking about good stuff, right? The juicy stuff, what's happening, the culture, pop culture, hot topics, you know, love, sex, relationships. Like we sit here for hours sometimes, even though we, we, we're going to respect y'all time, but we will sit here for hours and go so deep. But like, you know, before we do that, I just really wanted to, to, to just have this conversation honestly about um, wine, why we drink it, why we love it, what type you're choosing, why are you choosing it? Because we were kicking back like, you know what, do is it is it necessary for the culture to like know a little bit more about what they're drinking, why they're drinking it, why you choose a certain wine with certain foods. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I feel a little uneducated there, but I'm finding my way. What do you think? I'm definitely uneducated. I grew up in a very strict Christian home. I wasn't allowed to drink alcohol and I didn't really drink alcohol until college. So, and I, and I didn't even drink it then because I was still very churchy. So I didn't really start drinking wine until after my son was born and I was working and I just wanted to have a glass of wine after, after work. So of course, well, I don't know. I thought everyone did this, but maybe they didn't. But for me, most people I know, they start off with Moscato. That's what they had first. And that's what I had. I like sweet, sweet wine. So I used to drink Moscato. And um, then I graduated to Ruscato with an R. Ruscato, let me stop. But anyway, that was good. That was sweet. And I try other things, Merlots, Cabernets. I'm still not a wine connoisseur. Like, so I want to learn more. Um, hey, I didn't know that there's a difference between like the um, the the wine glasses, you know, like one's taught the stems, like once for one certain wine, once for other. I had no idea. Um, I also started a second job where we also had to sell wine to our customers. And um, I started learning different things about how to sell the wine. There's something called tannins, T-A-N-N-I-N-S. That's what the grapes make when the grapes, I don't know, when they're, they're stewing or churning, whatever it is, um, that's what makes the alcohol, the, the wine become wine. So I mean, long story short, you guys are going to see us on our journey as we learn about, you know, because we like to drink it. We love to drink it. But why are we drinking it? What is it? What's in it? How is it made? Um, what's the best one? What should we do? Like, you know, I think that that's good to know. So you're going to learn on, you're going to follow us on our journey as we learn more, because for me, I definitely drink it, but am I an expert? Can I tell you what to have? Um, no. So that's what we're here. That's what we're going to learn, you know, going forward. Well, take it back right quick. Big Exclusive has said he loved Moscato. I think I missed it. So many comments coming through y'all. Keep them coming. We're going to do our best to catch them all. Uh, but I'm catching some of them. And Big Exclusive said, I love Moscato. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I do not like Moscato. And I feel like Moscato is not really wine. I don't know. <laughs> Shake it up if I'm wrong. But I just do not enjoy it. And I feel like I had this guy that I was dating say, like, like I'm bougie because I don't like Moscato. But I just feel like Moscato is really not that good. And I don't know when I compare it to other wines that I even would, I don't know, ever recommend it. I'm sorry. I don't like Moscato. And everybody it loves it. On the person. Like you are a wine drinker. And I know a lot of people who are like wine drinkers who might be at the place like turning like this, like mm, let's smell it. <laughs> this is the wine I like double like, 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 like <laughs> Moscato. Oh no, I don't drink Moscato. I drink uh I don't even know I'm gonna make some processal blah blah blah. Like some random wine that I have never heard of in my life. What is that? So I definitely say that. Moscato might be for beginners. It's not a strong wine. It's sweet. But, oh, yes, exactly. Your preference is yours. Yes, it's a big exclusive set. Your preference, you know, whatever you like. Oh, so <laughs> is that you? you do that. Ah. Moscato, Riscato, um, even we're going to take it to, to, to the block. Even folks that drink um, Taylor's Port, like hopefully my girlfriend out here, one of my besties ever is oh, watching it. Taylor's Port. I'm yeah. like, what, what the hell are we doing out here? But um, Big Roll was like, uh, wine makes me feel important, especially when I drink it out of a sexy glass. Like, right? Have your pinky out? Have your pinky out like this? Like, yes. Like, you yes, yes, you know, <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, and Marcy just popped in. Right. It's a dessert. So are all sweet wines considered dessert wines? Any wine that's sweet, is that considered a dessert wine? I'm curious. Because we're learning. You know, we're still, we're still, I'm more so learning more than others. I, I'm definitely a beginner. So uh, oh, oh, okay. Mike Laws said I'm a full body wine drinker and I think 
and, and correct me, listen, from, from what I gather, like the tannin that you talked about, I feel that tannin is more of like the bitter taste that you get more and like, um, it, tannin is more of those dry wines, like like red wine. It's more, red wines are more tanning, from my experience. But is that what you mean when you say a full body wine? Because I don't know if I would call a white wine a full body. But let me know, Mike. Shannon recommends a specific wine. What are you talking about, Bray? Um, he had. I, I it went away. It was like a 1947. Uh, Something I don't know. I saw the year French something. There we go. French Cheval Blanc. <laughs> That's a, yeah. I don't even know what that is. I don't know, but I'm gonna learn soon. Every single week, every time, well, every other week that we post when we do our episodes, we're gonna talk about something new that we learn each time when it comes to wine. So stay yeah. tuned because we're gonna be growing. You're gonna be evolving with us. If you don't know, if you already know, you're gonna be okay. teaching us in the comments because <laughs> we're gonna be learning. Okay. So Marcy popped in. It's more the grapes and the aging. I guess that's what makes it a full body mm. wine. Okay, exactly. okay. But I also read that reds tend to be the wine that will age versus a white. But maybe I'm wrong. But Marcy's going to be on here as well. Just shout out Mar Chef Marcy. Um, for anyone that's looking for a chef, please do follow Marcy Jackson. If you see her in the comments, um, I have not had the food. I'm, I'm not going to lie to the people, Marcy, but those pictures I saw the other night on the Big Exclusive Podcast were looking delish. I was like, I was mouth, trying to figure out which one I was going to pick next. So go ahead. What's Shannon talking about? And then we'll go ahead and jump into some of these topics. He had, he had a really good um, comment and it went away, but um, he really was explaining um, the difference. Tannins can stem from four primary sources, the grape skins, Pips, that's the seeds and stems, and the wood barrels used during the age. And they provide texture and a mouthful to wine as well as a sense of weight and structure. Tannins create the drying sensation in your mouth when you drink a red. Ah, okay. Ooh. See, y'all, when you come with us past time of wine, you're going to learn about wine. But you're also going to be, it's going to be like you're with us right now having girl talk. Or if you're a guy, <laughs> you know, you know, listening to that girl talk, unless you want to chime in. I love when men sometimes chime in and give us advice sometimes. I don't mind that either. But, you know, come on our journey. Come on. Come like Mike Law said, a true Zinfandel. He likes a true Zinfandel. I need to know what that means because white Zinfandel turned me oh, off of Zinfandel. He's so said before. He, he said that before. He don't agree. Like, if you go to a certain wine store, I remember, I forgot. I had a sweet red. No, no, no. I had a red, a red blend, and he said that's not real wine. Uh, can, Mike, can you comment on that? Because he's, there's something he claims that's what makes a true wine. And when I had a red blend that was a combination of different red wines, he was like, yeah, that's not authentic. That's not a real wine. I want to know. I want him to expound on that if he can. But um, if he can't, we can definitely you know, put that in the comments later on. That is one of the most expensive bottles of wine in the world, says um, Shannon, big exclusive. Not quite sure which wine he's talking about. Maybe that was the one he dropped a little bit earlier. I need to um, refer back to that. The 19th. Yeah, that's probably the one. Mm -hmm. the it's, it's the almost the older it is, the more expensive it is and the stronger it is. So I'm assuming 1947, I probably dropped dead after drinking that. <laughs> I'm writing that down and ask that for a Christmas present from somebody. Listen, I want to try that. Um, but um, so... Real quick shout out, uh, Tiff um, typed in the chat earlier. She wants to try the governor's white. Um, I am going to make sure I bring one up to you next time I'm in Philly. Uh, but um, shout out to everybody. Listen, listen, you stay to the end, right? We are going to play a game, okay? The person who wins the game gets a bottle from me. Now, Tiff, you already got one because you asked. I had two giveaways tonight. So you're going to get a bottle of governor's white from me if you win the game. And the game is, Guess that song. For those who know me, knows that I speak in movies as a metaphor, and I love me a good song quote. So at the end of the show, a little bit before we close, we are going to drop some lyrics, and a person that can guess that song real quick at the drop of a dime, you cannot Google it because you ain't going to have the time, um, will win a bottle for me. So stay tuned for the Guess That Song um, game, and we're going to get on with some of these topics. So, Bray. We chatted a little bit about what we were talking about tonight, right? We did. Um, hot topics. Um, we want to talk about um, men who have a sex or women who have a sex and can't afford their baby. Should they still be having sex? We talked about um, um, another one. Ooh, modern day dating and going Dutch. Oh, man. And why Crystal got an attitude problem, okay? Um, but real quick, 
so something happened this week and I said, like, I really want to just check in right quick and talk about this. And uh, for those who know, I don't want to make this a sad occasion because it's, it's, it's the launch of Passing Time Online. We're having a good time. Hopefully you guys, as a matter of fact, before I go into this, drop in the chat what you drinking tonight. Hopefully you're pouring it up with us and celebrating tonight, okay? Um, some sad news came out earlier in the week. Last week, was it? Um, a gentleman died. One of our favorites. One of our favorites, A.J. Johnson who's been in a host, a host of movies that, I mean, I can sit here all day and try to remember them all, but long story short, like, I feel like all the hood films that I was watching, he had some type of presence in it. So it, I took notice um, to that to that news, but what really hit as far as um, the news for me, okay, we got, we got Mike. All right, hold on, we're going to, Rest in peace, AJ. We're going to go back to this conversation, but Mike answered LeBray's question. Go ahead. Go ahead, LeBray. <laughs> he said, once you start to mix and blend other wine plants with Ziffendale, it's no longer a Ziffendale. Mm -hmm. Why Ziffendale ruined it for me? I need to try a good Ziffendale. I'm over Ziffendale. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mike. You need to, you need to send me a good one. Merlot by Hess. I don't know, y'all. Merlot. Whew. I don't know. Anybody else drink Merlots out there? You guys should try. What if we took some wine suggestions of some of our guests? You can like in the comments give us some wine suggestions that we've never tried to try. And maybe, you know, every once in a while we can like maybe once a month or a few times a month, we can um taste it and and let the audience know. You know? I'm, you know? I'm, listen, I'm with it. I like I, I like to drink. I like to try new things. So Mike has uh, I think Mike was saying that he is drinking Merlot by Hess. My bad. Mike Law. Oh, this is he's drinking right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's what he said. Um, but so real quick, uh, we can keep talking about wine all night, y'all. So keep keep the recommendations coming. Allegra's talking about Riscato. I don't know, Allegra. I like so, Riscato. I, I mentioned that. Yes, Riscato is good. I love me some Riscato. I make some people mad. I feel like that's the ghetto wine. <laughs> Riscato. <laughs> if I, I'm I sorry. That was fancy. When I first started tasting it, I was like, "What is this?" It, it, it was like crack to me as soon as I take it. I haven't had crack before, but I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is so good. I don't even want mos what, Moscato. What? I don't want Moscato. Moscato was it for me for years. I was so in love with Moscato. Oh my gosh. So Mercedes Powell dropped in the chat. She is here for the sweet red suggestion. So yes. anybody out yes. there that got a sweet red suggestion, let us know. Big Rose, so he's drinking a 1998 Mountain. Do Scott what is that a what? <laughs> a big See, roll. There's too many wines that I can't keep what? up with. It's it's not not now. <laughs> I, I just can't. Wait, wait. Actually, before I, I we switch gears, I wanted to say this earlier. I think men, from my experience, I have actually dated more men who who know about wine, like more wine choices or better wine recommendations than I do. Uh, from my experience, something you said earlier, like I feel like there's a lot of men in this world that are like wine experts. I'm just saying, maybe they do it because they're trying to impress the women or something like that. But like, I have been impressed by men when it comes to their wine selections. I agree. Who made that up? So real I, quick, I'm, I'm, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Anyway. No, I just want to let everyone know if they see me looking to the right, it's because uh, we're also live on Instagram where we're getting comments on there as well. So I'm just making sure that I reply to them. I had to drop because I had. Uh, I turn the sound down. Turn your volume down. Can you turn it down or you couldn't turn yeah, it? I will. I put it down. So look, we trying like multitask over here. We trying to get it right, y'all. But so look, real quick, we're gonna go back to wine. But I really wanted to like talk about this like tonight, y'all. While we sipping wine. So hey, y'all. Everybody pull up your glass, please. Pause for a second. And if you haven't shared, liked, comment, and you just over there like a peeping Tom in the window, you know what I mean? Like, please drop a comment, share. Um, the more you share, the more love we get. Um, so long story short, put your glass in the air after you share. <laughs> I love rhyming, y'all. Put your glass in the air. We go on like glass in the air. We look like it just don't care. Hey, what like it just don't care. What I'm talking about. That's the time of why. And we also gonna like honestly say a rest in peace for our guy AJ AJ Johnson. I mean, if you grew up watching hood films, I'm sorry. Like he definitely has been around the block. Um, and I, I don't want to throw no shade on his death. Like, seriously, this is like, these are always sad occasions. But, but what really, like, was newsworthy for me was um, the fact that his um, 
family or uh, his wife, it seems, was on TMZ um, asking for money. And um, because of, you know, not having enough money to bury him. And I think that is like um, something that comes up very common within our community uh, where folks are not prepared for the long haul or prepared for something like death, right? And I think a lot of the feedback was around like, she's not getting the help that she feels that she deserves um, from his friends and stuff. But I wanted to talk about this. And, and we do have like a quick quote that I found when I think about this, no shade or anything like that, but I really want to always see how we can come up with solutions, right? So we could bring up that quote um, about the importance of purchasing life insurance. Like, like, um, Definitely, it's a bad thing if it's if it's homies and his friends. It's not 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 supporting the GoFundMe. Like we gotta get it get it together, y'all. Support the GoFundMe for this gentleman. But like um, a post that I saw recently from um, um, Rashad Ballard on behalf of Earn Your Leisure, we're required to have insurance on our homes and cars, but not on our lives. This should speak values, y'all, as far as like the game of insurance. However, um, and we can go ahead and drop that post um, off the screen. Like, why is it that we hear so often that we're in these situations where folks do not have the money either through insurance or some other means of investing within our community and we can't afford to bury, bury our family members? Yeah, that's something to think about. Um, to be honest, uh, we were just talking about this the other day and I do have life insurance, but I have it through my job and come to find out and don't make fun of me, y'all, for the audience that already knew this, because I did not. I didn't know that if I left, because my money, my check, money comes out of my check to go to this life insurance. And I come to find out that if I left that job, I'm thinking it's like sitting like a savings account, right? Like a savings account sitting in there. No, it's not. If I left that job and I died after I left that job, that life insurance is null and void. I didn't know that. So that's why people always have a second life insurance. They have their job life insurance and then they have a second one because you never know what's going to happen. So it's, it's very important. It's something that we don't always think about or maybe we're scared to think about, but it's very important to get that life insurance set up. But in addition to that, it's also very important to have wills set up because sometimes like, you know, if you die, you don't have your affairs in order. You know, who knows what's going to happen? I've seen after the fact, a lot of families fighting over who gets this house, who gets this, who gets this, who gets this property, who doesn't. And it's like, I think it's very important for us to, you know, write down and put down, you know, what our wills are, put a living will out there so that, you know, God forbid, if something does happen, your family can take care of you, have you properly buried and make sure that your, your assets are divided the way that you want them to be at, you know, you want them to be divided. Right, right, right. So it's about to come up on the screen, but Mike Law said his wife should have had a separate life insurance policy on him. Life, and if you're listening and you're not watching, it's all good. That's why we're reading and taking care of you. However you, however you engage, make sure you share, like, and comment, right? But if you're not watching and all you can do is listen, we got your back. His wife should have had a separate life insurance policy on him. Like that life insurance talk is real and should be mandatory with family discussions and structure. I won't get into the the rabbit hole of a conversation about why something like that is not mandatory right when it comes to our laws but you know if you want to think about it think about it right um uh, um however um, um shannon big exclusive said also make sure you have a good wife or a significant oh, other significant other, other. and, and i'll make sure you're straight yeah and so and I know sometimes when we have these type of conversations after these moments, um, the, the audience might take it wrong. Like, honestly, rest in peace. Like, uh, this is not at all a situation where we do not have sympathy or empathy. And um, this is really a sad time. Um, the reality, though, is we're all still alive. So sometimes these moments are lessons for us, right? Like, how can we carry on and, like, use these experiences, you know, like, for our future? And to your point, LeBray, like, you don't you I, I i i just found out that if you have life insurance at your job and you stop working at that job and something happens to you like you don't have life insurance there's all that you're you're paying into it right so a it's important to have life insurance and i, I actually started to interview um the life insurance companies that i am looking to invest in for my secondary because i also have one at my full-time job right after he, he, learning that 
it doesn't carry over, right? If you're no longer with that job. Long story short, it's very important to A, have some type of plan, a will, a trust that really helps coordinate with what's happening after you die. So go ahead and read what Shannon's talking about. Um, He said that he's saying it's, it's, it's a continuation from his previous one, which is about making sure that you, you sit, your significant other is going to make sure you're straight. And he said he's adding on to that, meaning that she'll have your back and be responsible one who understands that insurance and health are important because some over or just for those type of responsibilities. I want to comment on that. I do agree. But one of the things that people are people are saying about this woman, they're they're like some of them are like they're they're making it like as if like she shouldn't she should have had that like you should have had the insurance you had you should have had this. But again, we're talking about sometimes people are they don't know lack of knowledge. You know what I mean? So I don't want to penalize her for that because maybe she thought he had it. Maybe you know maybe she didn't know. But I'm not gonna front for me. I'm gonna say one thing. It doesn't mean but I did want to say this. I was trying not to because you've been very gentle, Crystal, and I appreciate that. But I'm not going to front. Me as the audience, looking at this, I'm just thinking like, so she's doing a GoFundMe. Now, forgive me, y'all. Forgive me before I say what I say. <laughs> she's doing a GoFundMe. And in my mind, I'm thinking, isn't he a celebrity? Like, I'm like, I mean, I'm joking, but there's people going check that like, strong, like, you, you know, and I, and I, I felt bad, like, she asked for twenty thousand dollars, and only people get what well, she only had eight hundred dollars on this GoFundMe. But I'm a part of me thinking that some people are probably thinking like, well, don't she got it? Like, did he not take care of her? He was in, he was a celebrity making this money. Like, where'd the money go? But I have to, I had, I had to correct my thinking. I'm not gonna front y'all. That was my first initial thinking. But then I was thinking, let me stop because I'm a struggling actor right now. I'm acting. Do I know it don't pay all the time? You get paid sometimes. That money goes. So, you know, you got to make sure you be smart with your money. You got to invest. You got to, who knows what happened? Who knows what happened with their investments, what happened, whatever. Unfortunately, now she's stuck with burying her husband that she probably did not expect was going to die. Well, And what are you going to do? That's it, though. That's it. So, like, here we go. Okay, that's the sound bite. All right? Like, we out here living like we're going to live forever. You, I know you said I was being gentle or you feel like I need to not be so gentle, right? Like, we're not going to live forever, right? How are we setting up, one, our, our legacy? For once, we're not here no more. How are we, like, and, and if you don't care about your legacy, that's fine. If you don't care about generations beyond you, maybe you don't want to invest in stocks. Maybe you don't want to do a will, do a trust to make sure the money stays in the family. Maybe you don't want to do all that. At bare minimum, at least take care of the person that's going to bury you. Yes. Like, and you ain't getting no money, minimum. no savings. What's going on, boo-boo? I was just trying to figure out what happened. Like, what, what happened? We, can we just take care better. of just don't worry you? And that might not be your wife. And and, and that, that burden might fall on the, 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 the niece. That burden might fall on the granddaughter. That burden might fall, fall on the neighbor. Like, I don't know. The burden will fall on somebody. I see you over there pulling, girl. So, lit, pull, pull, I mean, pouring, girl. Listen, so we about to get lit, lit and get into this next topic, right? And if you are a little low on your drink, so real talk, listen, full disclosure, do not drink and drive. We do not support it. <laughs> but if you're a little low on your drink, let's go ahead and pour a little bit for the homies who ain't here no more and say cheers. I'm going to give you a couple moments while we switch over to the next topic. Yeah. All right. I'm getting text messages while I'm live. I don't know what to say. And, um, All right, so we're going to go on to the next topic, and um, that is... So we want to talk about, oh, I got that text from 19 Keys. All yes, right. Yeah. All right, so so Dante, shout out to Dante, man. He's on the ones and twos. Ficky, 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 wrong, Dante. So can we drop that um, quote um, from, from My Thoughts Could Be a Blog? Um, please follow me if you're not already on my Instagram. Uh, my thoughts could be a blog. Listen, I received exactly a, how it sounds. <laughs> exactly how it sounds, right? I got a text, right? So I'm in, I'm in, the, I'm in the community of 19 Keys. Um, 19 Keys is a, a gentleman out there in the world right now, just doing big things. You know, educating. You hear a sound off of the computer on, on your laptop? Right now, baby. I, that's what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> I promise. I put everything on Do Not Disturb. I don't know why it's coming through. Um, but so. 19 Keys is a gentleman out there in the world trying to do big things, um, educating everybody on like, you know, stocks, uh, just new ways of thinking, 
Um, uh, um, he's awesome. So if you want to follow him, don't do all the little scam um, pages. Definitely follow 19 keys, no keys, like no, 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 no characters after it. Right. Um, cause he got a lot of scammers. Long story short, he posted something in his community that came through that really messed me up a bit. Okay. And he said, I don't know who need to hear this. I don't know which one of y'all need to hear this. All right. Stop having sex if you broke. Because you'll have a child you can't afford. Priorities first. Hashtag 19 keys. So that inspired me to write my post um, not too long ago that was uh, what you just saw on the screen for those who watching. Should you stop having sex if you cannot afford the children that you could possibly potentially have? Let's talk about it. Audience, please. We want to hear your comments. Uh, LeBre, what you think? Um... I think that if you have the ability to responsibly have sex, meaning be protected, um, birth control, wearing condoms, all those things, then I think you can have sex. Let's continue having sex. But to be honest, the reality is a lot of times people are going raw. Um, I saw this post the other day, raw is law. Like <laughs> there's some people like they just want to go raw all the time. Like that's what oh, they want to do. Right. You know, having babies all over the place, like multiple babies all over the place. So with that being said, if you can't afford to have children, if you can't afford to take care of those children, then um, you probably should probably forgo, you know, putting your semen or putting, you know, open up, whatever, you know, doing whatever you got to do around the globe. You know what I'm saying? Because you need to save some money. You got to, you know, I think to be honest, it's about perspective. It's about, it's about putting things in perspective and putting things in order, the list of things that should matter in your life. And um, and go from there. But hey, you know, that's just my opinion. But so to long, long story short, because I can be a little long winded. I don't know if I necessarily 100 percent agree with that statement, but I get what it, the point of it was is to make you think like to make you think, especially for those who are irresponsible. Raw is raw. So listen, <laughs> I love folks like that when that's like the hashtag of the year. I don't know who posted uh-huh. that. Listen, hold on now. Hold on. I want I want to hear from the audience and I want to bring somebody on. Are there any brave souls out there that want to talk on this topic? And I, and I want a man to talk on this topic because I'm biased. I think this message was for men. And it could have been for women, right? But I feel like this message was for men, so I'm a little biased because I got my opinion. I see a couple people in the building. Who try, who try to hop on here and, t- and, t- and talk to this? I need some brave souls. I see you over there, King Life. You trying to talk to it? You trying to get on here? I need a yes or no. All right, so we're gonna bring on Mr. King Life, and um, I want you to answer the question directly. What's the question? I'm doing this. Oh, there we go. See, so that's why Dante is the man with the master plan. What's the question? How you doing? How you doing? You just raised your hand because you wanted yeah. to be on camera. You must have got a haircut today. Um, <laughs> not at all. Somebody got <laughs> shit off or something because you ain't uh, even know the uh, question. You up? just volunteered yourself. All right. Why so not? Did you did you hear the quote? So I'm going to read the not my quote. I'm going to read the harsh quote. Um, the harsh mm-hmm. quote was, um, "Not sure who needs to hear this today, but um, I think I lost it, y'all." I think I lost it. Not sure who needs to hear to stop having sex if you broke because you'll have a child you can't afford. Priorities first. So should you refrain from, and and, and actually one of the comments that I got when I posted this was, um, most guys were like, no, no, you shouldn't stop having sex, right? But one of the comments I got was sex is about procreation. And let's think bigger for me, indulge me. Sex is about procreation sex is about having children sex is for that purpose and some of the things that we um the desires we fall succumb to really it's not the purpose for sex and and some gentleman wrote that to me so it makes me think that somebody's out here thinking like how keys is thinking so what are your thoughts that depends on the purpose sex is also for pleasure but just because you broke or you have money i don't mean that you can't pleasure yourself we humans that's part of life one don't have nothing to do with the other unless you're monetizing based on your sexual parts. Then that's something different. What you think, LeBron? No, I agree. I agree with that. I actually, I hate that Raw's Law is not. Yeah, I agree. Everybody, no, everybody I, 
But um, I do agree that sex is not just for, for, for procreation. Like se- mm-hmm. God made it. If we are going to go with the Bible, God made sure we had parts of our body that felt pleasure. You know what I mean? For yeah, a reason. For pleasure, for pleasure, for pleasure too. Exactly. You're not going to be having sex and you don't, you're not enjoying it. He knew that. So he made sure that we were going to enjoy it. You know, we have organs that are made to be pleasured. So, no, I don't think it's just just solely for procreation. No. Y'all made me spill my if, wine. If, if you broke, you, you, if you broke, I mean, you could be more um, careful. That's what I'm thinking. Just be a little but bit more careful. Lock your shit up just because you broke. I can't have sex. No. <laughs> But someone said, and I agree with that, big role, he said that, yeah, and actually his other comment also is along the same lines of that. He said that um, people go ahead, there's some people who have sex every single day with different people all the time and they don't ever get pregnant. He feels like sometimes, he said not to get too biblical, but that sometimes children are are, are ordained by God, like God had them, you know, are, were, they were meant to be in this world. So there's times where um people have been having sex all the time they don't they don't ever get pregnant and then there's sometimes where i thought she's gonna say orgasms i, I, I was trying to keep it like pg um or you know a little whatever but um anyway back to my point and i agree with what big roll was saying that um sometimes i i do agree that i think that children are meant to, if they if, if you gave birth to them they're they're meant to be here if you got pregnant although you know what i'm i'm gonna stop doing that's a slippery slope because there's this whole recently we had these uh what did Texas rule? Texas ruled it illegal to um, have abortion. Um, and that's a whole conversation. So you know what? I don't, I, I don't, I want to be sensitive to those who I don't want to. Anyway, if you're an, if you're a Christian, you know, you're probably taught that every child is meant to be here. Every child is supposed to be here. God ordained that child to be here. Even if, even if, you know, something happened that was unfortunate, but a baby was born from it. God wants you to have it. That's that's how we're taught. We're taught that these children are meant to be here. So with that being said, then um, regardless if you're care- his big role's point was regardless if you're careful or not, if this child's supposed to be here, this child's gonna be here. So Shannon said, "Why are you gonna be in PG?" <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> well, you know what? She need to pour some more wine because. Um... <laughs> I'm just like, and anybody who can assist in them abortions can be prosecuted. Exactly. And that's, I mean, that's a whole different conversation. That wasn't something we plan on talking about, but that's something I'm like, wow, that's really happening right now in 2021. Like I have my opinions about abortion, but I always felt like everyone wants to have the choice to do what they want with their body. Um, That's all we know. Regardless of my opinion about children aborting or whatever, I always felt like that should be the choice between the individual. God himself gave us free choice, you know, to sin. Now, you know, technically there's certain, you know, things that can happen. If you believe in those things, if you sin, this could happen. But we still have the choice to do that. So why are we taking away the choice for these women to to not be able to do what they feel like they might need to do in that circumstance? Every circumstance is different. So um, that's just, hey, is that? I think his name is Old Head. Y'all come Old Head. Old Head. Shout out yeah. to <laughs> the podcast. And we're going to take a little pause right quick. If you didn't refill the last pause, make sure you refill whatever you drink, even if it's water, because you know what? Water keep my skin looking real good. So pour it up, refill it up, and make sure you share, like, comment. Shout out to the Big Exclusive Podcast. Definitely a podcast to listen into and tune into. So he says, Big exclusive, that is. A couple more sips for both of you. This is going to be a very different show. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. So I no, see a couple people in the building. What'd you say? I said, too busy on. At least not live. We might, you know, at, outside of the live, we might, <laughs> you never know. It might be some twerking I here mean, and there. But, we might you know, get lit. Cool. No, we got a couple. <laughs> just to tell you all a little bit about us. We've been doing this for a long time, right? We got a, we got a couple pre-recorded shows. We got like six or seven, to be honest, pre-recorded shows where we like, damn, we lit lit up in this. <laughs> so anyway, we do get a little, a little lit. This is the first one. And I'm going to keep it real. We warming up. We warming up. Crystal must I want to um, doing you good. <laughs> there's a comment on um, StreamYard that I don't think that people on Facebook could actually read. And I wanted to read okay. it because I liked it. Um, I'm not sure. Um, his name's Milton. Um, it says, my personal opinion. So this, that was his disclaimer before he finished it. Everyone knows this is before his personal opinion. Milton, wait, I was looking at Milton down here and I want to bring him in. Milton, you want to come live? You want to come on? Nod your head, yes. <laughs> you coming? 
because I'm about to add you. So since you want to read his post, I was looking at him um, and I wanted to bring well, him, him live. He can talk himself. That's cool. Um, I saw him down there, but I can't get him in here. No, he said he's actually at work. So he's oh, not okay. going to be. All right. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. I just, he, I was looking at him like, I want to bring him in. I know what he's going to say, but go ahead. Um, so he said there's a personal opinion. His personal opinion is that it's, it's that sex is for pleasure and coming together emotionally. He believes that children are treasures from the most high. But if you can't spiritually, emotionally and especially financially provide for the children, first get yourself together in all areas of your life before you even consider bringing children in this world. Mm. 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 Wait, wait, oh, wait, wait, hold wait. up. Someone said hold something. Nikki. Whole Nikki's post, Dante. Can you can we come back to Nikki because I really don't want to. We, we can't swing past that. We cannot just swing past what he just said because as much as we're getting caught up in the semantics of like what that statement said in a very raw like way, like what he just said was a word. Well, can you read that again or just read a highlight? Of I want to read the part that he said at the end because that, that resonated with me a lot. Like, he said that um, children are treasure treasures. That's one thing you want to make sure everyone knew. But if you can't spiritually, emotionally, and especially financially provide for your children, first get yourself together in all areas of your life before you ever consider bringing, consider bringing children in this world. And I actually agree with that um, a lot. If I can go back now, I want to say this. I don't regret my child, but I had my child. I was in college and um, I was 22. So I was finishing up college and I had him. But if I keep it real, I was not ready. And I will say a lot of times when I talk to people, we're really not taught about, you know, about how to, you know, when to bring kids in the world, if you should. I even from when I was younger, I just thought of it like, I want to have a baby. In my mind, I was thinking I wanted to create the family that I didn't have. And I want, I just always want to have a baby. I always want to get married, have that white picket fence. And I want to have a baby. That's what I wanted. But a lot of times, I think a lot of times people think about the baby. But what happens when the baby is here? The baby's here now. It's crying at three o'clock in the morning, two o'clock in the morning. You can't sleep. It's relying on you to take care of them and, and to feed them, to, to, to change their diaper and, and do that unconditionally with all love and not be frustrated. And um, that shit is I, hard, I think that's very important. Are you able to handle that? It's stressful. Can you emotionally take care of this child? Can you spiritually uplift this child? Can you financially provide for this child? Like that matters so much. It's so important. And if I can go back, I mean, luckily I had a good job, you know what I'm saying? And I was, I'm a, I'm a good mom, but if I was more prepared, I probably would have waited until, you know, I was actually married. I was engaged to my child's father, but we weren't married. I would have waited to be able to provide the child what I think that a child should have. So anyway, long story short, that's my little personal opinion. I do agree with Milton when it comes to thinking about that because children, they are so much, they are affected by what their parents do. So if you're not spiritually there, if you're not emotionally there, and then that's going to, your child's going to feel that. Your child's going to feel that. And if you can't provi provide for your child, you mm. know what I'm saying? That's this. You know what I mean? It's going to be a struggle. Now, I know I've seen mothers who made it work, you know, in the struggle. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not saying you can't, if you don't have money right now, you're not going to have money in the future. But I do think it's important to be very responsible with, you know, bringing a, a child in the world. And I'm sorry for that long tangent, but I, Milton's post kind of me. It's I'm going to talk about Mr. Law, <laughs> cheers to your, um, your Merlo Hess, Mr. Law. If you're still, still watching, I want to cheers to you right quick. I want to go back to Nikki Kavon Stone. She said something very good. And I skipped over her because I was deep into Milton's like posts. Nikki, can we go back to Nikki? Shout out to Dante. Hopefully he got some Merlo Hess in the studio as well. <laughs> it does it seem does like seem. a lot of women. Go ahead. I'm my bad, babe. No, no, go ahead. It does seem like a lot of women who are assisted by the government has multiple children. Like, what are they putting in the water? And it's just my observation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. I mean, we got we got another one about women. Women out here with multiple kids and no man and no money, says Allegra. Um, 
so and some other people are just really Marcy in support of you know some I agree. People, some people mature when they have children. I've seen fathers mature like they were out here, but once their daughter was born, like they reformed the whole life. I had a guy I was dating, he said his daughter changed his whole life changed his life. I'm not gonna front that brought little tears in my eyes too, like hearing about, you know, I love seeing fathers be fathers to their children. Like I love it. I love it so much. Um and said, there's no such thing as the perfect parent with all the right moves and answers. We grow into good parents through experience and drive. And then of course Mr. Angry O'Head aka Lamont. I didn't pay my kids. He was just getting we was just getting it in. So I think a lot of the like later conversations or later comments really do address the fact that kids are a blessing, right? Like it just is what it is. We're not, I don't think that statement was meant to even uh, say that kids are not a blessing. We figure it out. We get in where we fit in, right? But I, I personally feel like there's something to think about though for some folks out here in the world. If you're not the audience for that statement, then you're just not it. But I personally feel there is an audience for that statement. There is an audience. If you are not it, Keep doing what you're doing, brother. Keep doing what you're doing. Woman. Like, you know what I mean? Like, shout out to you, king and queen, if you are not the audience. But where I get kind of funny with some of these, like, very harsh statements is, if you're not the audience, don't take it personal. But let's not ignore that there may be an audience. And let's not ignore what's happening within our community, that there may be an audience for those type statements. And I'm going to leave it at that. We're going to pop to the next um, topic because we passed in time one. And honestly, like, I need a refill. What you got going on there, LeBray? Um, I got my doorbell ringing. For, and I'm not <laughs> sure why. It's happening. Wait, well, listen, y'all. Let me talk about LeBray right quick. Are y'all ready? Shout, sh shout out to the audience. If Can y'all drop a one? Well, give me a moment to watch that door, door. Y'all pop a one in a comment if y'all ready. So LeBray was like, uh, 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 Christo, can you shut down your text messages? And she got doorbells ringing and shit. <laughs> I'm just playing. But I'm just saying, this is the type of stuff we go through. She was like, can you just silence that phone? <laughs> Whole doorbell. The dog won't bark in like five minutes, y'all. <laughs> I'm just playing. I love my girl, though. I love my girl. I love my girl. Um, but um, see, look, and now she left me by myself. But it's okay. We're about to hold it down. The next topic was very important to LaBrace. I'm going to like really just check in with the audience before I jump to that one. And don't forget, we're giving out a bottle of Governor's Life. It's my favorite wine. It's a Virginia wine made here in Williamsburg. Everybody pop the one in the chat because everybody want to hear me talk trash about LaBrace. <laughs> Trying to pin us ladies against each other. It's like, no, I'm just kidding. But I thought it was funny that she was just like, can you, can you silence that? Um, but um, <laughs> Big Rose said I'm putting all her business out there. Um, we're going to do a game toward the end of the show, right? We're um, and Actually, it's momentarily we're going to do a game. I'm going to read the lyrics. You're going to have to guess the song. The first person that type in the chat the name of the song is going to get a bottle of Governor's White. It's a Williamsburg wine. It's a Riesling. I mean, maybe Marcy, when she comes in next week to talk more about wine, she can help me understand why I love this wine so much. Because I'm not that big of a fan of Riesling. And anybody who drinks Riesling might know there is a there's a spectrum. It's a, a sweet, uh, medium sweet, medium to dry spectrum when it comes to Riesling. And maybe that's the case for all wines. I don't know. But I know when you look at some Riesling bottles, you'll, you'll get that description. And this particular Riesling, Riesling is like a, it's like a in the middle for me. It's like not too sweet. It's not too dry. It's like just right. Like, ooh, I'm like, I'm ooh, these so sorry, out here. I'm like, <laughs> oh, these locks out here. I love me some Governor's White. Oh, the Governor's, Governor's White? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but Shannon said, I never went, so let me know where I can buy it. Oh, okay. You got to come to Virginia. Like, I've never seen it anywhere. Or order online. You can get it online, and, too. Like, when I tell y'all, I have taken this wine, like, that serious. The first time I had the wine, I was like, oh, this is the first white I'm in love with, right? So I, I started buying, like, it's just like 10 bucks. And if you go to Total Wine, it's like seven, like, mad cheap, right? So I started buying like a whole bunch if I would go somewhere, you know, go up north to Philly. Because I live in VA, for those who don't know. I live not too far from Virginia Beach. But I'm from West Philly. So I go up, I go home. I always bring a bottle. 
And my friends are like, yo, what is this? It's a really good wine, y'all. But anyway, so Big Rose so, switch over because I was talking trash. All right, so um, again, I apologize, y'all. I had a, a package delivered. My mom delivered a package. I'm like, what's going on here? So if y'all heard the doorbell ringing, you know, that was something unexpected that normally would not happen. I had everything muted, you know, my cell phone on do not disturb, my laptop, everything's prepared. I'm lecturing Crystal on that. Look, can you turn down these chimes? Can you turn down them? And then hear my doorbell ringing. Did? How she was coming at me because I got a text That's message. Nice. But um, so I wanted to talk about we're going to talk about courting right now, the modern day courting that's going on right now in society. Let's talk about, let's talk about, let's talk about and um, when it comes to, um, you know what, we're black men. I mean, we're black men. We're black women. And we're going to talk about. The wine oh, kicking in, y'all. Yeah, it's kicking in, y'all. It's kicking in. So we are, uh, we are black. I was about to say black men again, y'all. But we are black women. So uh, sometimes our, what we talk about can kind of be under the lens of black women. But I want everyone to feel included. Um, men and women, but I, I honestly feel like this is probably something that most, no, no, it's not. This topic, every race can relate to. So let's talk about going Dutch. Like, you know, does anyone know what that means? That means going half and half. You pay you your portion. You the man post? Pays your portion. Let's show the post. There's this post that came up last week and it was on, uh, I think baller alert or shade room or something. The man's ass. So the man's in the gray. He's asking her, where do we go from here? She's like, well, where do you, where, where would you like to go? He's like, we should set up a Dutch date. And she's like, what, you know, what the F is a, a, a Dutch date? <laughs> and he's like, well, being that it's our first outing and we don't know if we're interested in each other, there's ways to make sure our intentions are pure. I'll pay for my food. You pay for yours. I'll leave the tip. And on the second date, it's all on me. So that, that post was generated throughout my Facebook. Um, various different people were, were posting that. And um, I was looking at the comments. And to be honest, I get it. I get it. Meaning, look, we, we just met each other. We don't even know if we like each other right now. Like, let's figure this out. Let's figure this out. But I'm not confront for me. So I want to put that out there first. I get where he's coming from. I get his logic. But unfortunately, he is battling a system where we've been brought up since we were children that the man courts the woman. Like the woman, the man courts us. The man asks us out on a date. We're used to that as women. Like we were used to that. We are. Oh yeah, I, I know. I add that in there. I felt like I, that read better. You know. What you think? Let's let let like, hold on. I want a man, but I do want a man on this one because we women, right? But I want to like switch it up a little bit for this topic. Let's bring in a woman who who's willing to come on live. And then we'll bring in a man afterwards, right? I want to bring in a woman to explain her point of view, POV on this one. Because we could talk for days about this crappy ass. I didn't even show my point of view first yet. <laughs> I didn't even finish oh, my I'm sorry, boo. I'm sorry. Go ahead. The wine kicking in for me, too. Go ahead. But no, go ahead. Put them on. But I didn't I didn't finish mine. <laughs> I didn't finish well, talking. But that's okay. You can go ahead and put Allegra or whoever on. Allegra, you want to speak? You want to get on? We got Rachel Harris in the building, and I don't see Allegra over here. She must not be logged into the stream yard. Tell her to log into the stream yard because I don't see her. Rachel is on here. You want you trying to come in, Rachel? Device not connected. Y'all got to get it together, man. Y'all got iPhones and stuff. Get it together. I'm just saying. Like your life insurance, yo. Add your life insurance and get your freaking cell phone together so you can come live. Joke. <laughs> anyway, Marcy wants to come on, but I don't see her in the production room now. So Dante, help us out there, all right? But LeBray, while we figure that piece out, um, talk about more about your point. Yeah, I wanted to finish what I was saying. So, um, you know, a lot of times what's what's getting for me right now is that I feel like we as women are suffering from the the past transgressions that men have experienced when it comes to their dating experience. And one thing I have experienced personally when it comes to dating is that men always are worried about women bringing their baggage into the relationship, but yet men are doing the same thing. So just because you had a woman in the past who only wanted to go out with you for a meal, I'm out with you for a meal. So I just get really irritated where men like where men are like, you know what? There's a lot of women here going out for a free meal. I'm not going to be giving her a free meal. So let me just make sure I'm going to pay for my meal, pay for her and all that. 
on one end, I get that because my intentions are pure, but I'm not going to front. I might just be thinking if he's already going into dating me with like that skepticism, I just feel like that is not a good um, way to start anything. I probably would still go on the date. Like if I really liked the guy and I saw something going on, if I saw chemistry there, I probably still would go. But it's, that would just be weird to me. Like that would be weird to me because most times when guys ask you out, they, um, they're they going to pay. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that I'm going to like, just because I got that meal don't mean like, okay, deuce, I got that meal. Yeah. Why do guys right. think that we're just waiting for a free meal? Like we're hungry. Like we're starving on a corner of the street. Like, feed me. Like, I don't need you to feed me, dog. Like, I don't need you to feed me. <laughs> yo, yo, the one you know, when the talk, me. right? When she when the wine kick in, the brain like get real passionate, she start doing like sound effects and shit. Like, y'all, y'all people. I, I just feel like I just feel like this. Like, I need you to to respect me. Let's worry about that. Don't worry about that stuff. Don't worry about your past, how women treat you. Let's all have a clean slate. The same way you want me to come in with this clean, this clean slate. Like if you want me to come in with a clean slate and not use the past, my past pains from other men and not use that to judge you, then you need to do the same thing. We come as clean slates. You ask me out, nigga, on a date. So why are you asking for me to pay? That would turn me off. So that would turn me off. Let's pause for a second because um, Marcy definitely is in the building. Don't break on just yet. She won't come on. But, like, it's a lot of comments coming through. You got a lit lit, boo. But real quick, there was one comment that's like, what happens if she asks, should she pay? And honestly, I want, I want to pause that because that's not what we talking about. And it's a lot of men out here that's not doing that, right? Because I feel like that's a case by case. If she asks and she want to pay, fine, let her pay. But to be honest, on a side note, if she do ask and you don't pay, I'm going to keep it real. Like, she's going to look at you funny. But if, but but most of the occasion is like, you have men out here trying to go Dutch and try to slide in the check to you when they asking you out. So I think that's what this is really about. Um, and I'm not trying to like diminish that comment. But what we're talking about is out here in the dating field, it's real. In a bill, I've gone on dates with a guy who asked me out and like he like order one drink and I'm like eating dinner, not because I'm trying to like eat off of him, but I'm hungry. He asked me out at six o'clock on a Tuesday night. I just got off work. I'm hungry. So I had to order me a meal, order me a drink. He only sitting here like like holding his drink close and then say, Oh, oh, I got that one drink. And like pay for his one drink. Like, okay. How about this, boo? I'm gonna take the whole check and I'm gonna pay for your drink. And I'm never calling you again. So we're going to bring in Marcy. Let's hear what she got to say. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Marcy. Okay. Chef Marcy, shout out to Chef Marcy. She is the cook with the, um, that gets you shook. All right, let's go. What's your opinion on it? So listen, let me tell you something. Speak for yourself. Feed my ass. I don't give a shit. Feed me. My husband got to be my husband because he fed me. Now, I don't eat expensive meals, no. Feed me, whether it's Chick-fil-A or a four for four from Wendy's. Feed me. Um, but also, too, I think that the courting is a thing, right? Because it's so expensive to date. Like, it's so expensive, right? Let's, let's, let's be real. Like, to date is expensive. And to not have a girl trash you to her homegirls and get us out the group message and trash you there, too. Like, who wants to go down that road, right? And I had this one guy, right? He wanted to do a pre-date, right? And I was like, what the fuck is a pre-date? He said, we got to go out and see each other, and then we'll decide if we want to go on a date. But didn't ask me to go get coffee. Didn't say that. You, you, you know why I'm more so seeing? Hold on. Cream. I know I invited you on the show, but I'm going to cut you off, right? Because it's my show. But you know why? <laughs> Wait, you know why? It's because these men aren't vetting. We had this conversation before, Bray. Did we not? We had this we conversation did. before. I run, And Marcy, maybe you can agree. I personally feel like women vet differently sometimes when it comes to dating. I've heard guys say, oh, I'm on Tinder. I'm on all these apps. And like these girls want to just talk on the phone. I'm trying to meet you date too because I, I need to know what that ass looks like. I need to know what you look like. I need to know if this, if this. So in my personal opinion, because I heard that so often, right? 
that like because the reality of it is a lot of men are dating online a lot of women we're all dating online these days right we cannot ignore that we are meeting people on even if you're not signed up for tinder or any other freaking app you're you're, you're seeing someone on facebook and instagram to try to holler at you in their dms you might run into somebody at the supermarket but you know what a lot of us are dating online so you meet these people and from what i hear from men they like yo uh-uh day one day two day three like why is she trying to draw this out? And personally, I feel like as a woman, we trying to draw it out because we're trying to vet you to see if you are somebody that I want to move forward with, right? Whereas I feel like men are so caught on, I need to say what that ass look like. I need to see if her picture's legit. I need to see if I really want to like, you know, bone her. Like, so they are going in their pockets more because every two, three days, they on a new date. I'm going to drop it right there. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. Because I'm a person, before I was married, I dated. And I told you, I dated. Um, and mm, I don't think that the vetting process is different. I think that women go into things like dating and, and, and being serious with people, not fully aware of what they want. So that makes a difference in in the in the dating process or the vetting process, right? Because if you meet someone online wherever and you pretend to be down for what that man is down for, then now you already got a problem, and that's why your 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 intentions can be misconstrued, right? So if you're, why would you be on Tinder looking for a man to marry? All right. Like like that doesn't make any sense. Listen, what do you mean by that? Know. What do you mean by being on Tinder looking for a man to marry? Because so there's a lot of girlfriends. Go ahead. So if you're on Tinder, right, most people are looking for friendships, situationships, and things that are casually happening. It's True, but there person. are some people who found marriage on there. I had some girlfriends. I actually had some girlfriends who were in long-term relationships and and um and got married from Tinder. Meeting and that's someone fine. You can get married, you can be in a long-term relationship. That doesn't mean it's a good relationship. And that's fine. And I'm not saying they don't exist. Because I'm a person, like, I feel like if I want to fuck you on the first time, I'm going to do that. And I've been with people and I fucked on the first night and we still together. It is just what it is. Because oh, everybody is different. Mercy, you ain't playing. What you help you? know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like everybody is different. So I don't think there's a one rule applied to everything. That's not what I think. Right? I think you can have somebody on the, on the first night and have sex and y'all can be together forever. You can get married with somebody in, in 10 years and you, it might not be good to you. So there's no rule to say what's right or wrong or what time frame is good. But I think that a lot of times people that be on these sites are not always going into it looking for something serious. It might become serious as they get to know that individual. Yes. Right. So that's, so that's where the vetting phase comes in. That's where the vetting phase yes. comes in. But that's where the vetting phase yes, comes in. Yes, that's down the road. But initially, no, you don't get in the no, site. No, because we... No, we need to be vetting in the first 72 hours. In the beginning, because let's let's eliminate Tinder. Let's eliminate Tinder. Even when it comes to my channel. I'm going to bring you back on another chat because time is is not on our side. So I'm going to get somebody else on here. Love you, Boop. Thanks so much for joining. So let's get a gentleman on here right quick. Um, Pick somebody. Pick a guy. Um, Big Exclusive has been talking a lot. Big role. Who you want to come on? Um, don't make me pick. I was gonna. True, exactly. I'm sorry. I want to. I'm sorry. I gotta finish my. T- I want to tell Marcus something. I, I'm gonna finish this before we get someone else. But I think biggest losers should come on. But um, I feel like this. You need to vet so you can bring them on while I'm talking. You need to vet when you meet I'm someone. The stream, but okay. Yeah, or or big role. It, it, if you meet someone, you need to vet. Like, you need to vet. And what we mean by vet is that means take the time. A lot of times we'd be a little too hyped. I want to get married. I want to get married. I want to be in a relationship. How about you take your time? Develop this, you develop a friendship. Get to know this person. And you can do that on Tinder. Tinder. You can do it on Hinge. You know what? You can do it on any dating site you are on. You can also do that when a dude approach you or if a woman approach you in real life. Especially if you I don't know how old y'all are, but I feel like most of us over 30 and that side part, like, if you ain't like, share, comment, please do that. And refill your drink for the homies ain't here no more. Shout out to AJ Johnson, y'all. Listen, if you're not vetting within the first 72 hours, like something wrong. And a lot of it- We both said this and Allegra said this. The phone conversation matters even before the date. You can take time and you can, can get to know a person within 15 to 30 minutes to know whether or not this person's compatible. 
That's oh, all you need. Real quick, LeBray. We LeBray and I read this book, yo, and it had us on a whole nother level, y'all. And we was not planning to talk this long, but if y'all hanging with us, we're gonna talk a little bit longer because we want to close it out with that game. So I want to give away some wine. Um, because I love my governor's wife. So hang on because I want to play that game and I want to give away some wine, right? Um, but I'm no, I'm not on bottle number two, big bro. I'm still on the first bottle. It's all good. My glasses look bigger than what it is. Uh, but um, anyways. <laughs> Listen, the brand and I were reading this book, and we're gonna keep it a buck with y'all. We were just over it. Like, like we losing out in these streets. Like, so we we LeBray put me D on this book. It's called um LeBray. What, what's the book called? What, what is it? The the date like a Spartan. Date like I'm putting it out there. Oh, you, you ain't trying to see LeBray be no, like, I'm like. I'm a little like, weird. I, like, I don't remember what the book was called, called but I know the Spartan. author's name is Gail Lambert. It's um, it's it's uh, yeah, it is called what you said, dating like a Spartan, and basically, it's a man giving woman game. So guys oh. probably ain't gonna like it, but women, I tried to all my girlfriends to read this book or listen to the audible. Oh, listen, guys, listen, I feel listen like I feel like girls should read this book in second grade, yo. Like, this is like learning about finances. You need to read they like a, listen, if you read they this, like you a wanna, Spartan. If yes. you want to grow yes. your wealth knowledge, right? And if you out here, anybody out here that's looking into stocks, bonds, trust, life insurance, read they like a Spartan. Because he is giving you because he's smart. Money. He was smart. Like, oh, he's he's asking, big role asking, date like Spartan. Yes, because it's for the yes. women who are quote unquote good, good women. women. But who are struggling, like, why Why don't I have a man? Or why don't I have a consistent man? Why am I not relationship? Why am I not married? It's for those women who are like that, who are, you know, who want to know what's going on. This man is, is peeping game for us. Because I honestly feel like men are a little bit better when it comes to going on to the next. Us women sometimes, we hold on to guys. Y'all guys, look, at y'all don't want no good guy. We do want good men. But we tend to hold on. And you know how we hold on? We going off a little bit, but you know how we hold on? This was Spartan. The Spartan game taught us, right? Yo, yo, Marcy, yo, Marcy, I'm done with you. <laughs> no, actually, Marcy, you know what the book did? It didn't bring me because I'm still single. I just it helped me learn watching. how to date because I didn't know how to date. What it did was it taught me as being a single woman how to stop. And Mark, it's not about finding a husband. It's about getting rid of these like. Like lingering ass guys that that be keeping us from finding good men. Like like the love bombing approach. A lot of men will do the love bombing in the first week. They get you all caught up, and it might not be you, Marcy. I mean, I get it. You married and all, but you gotta have a little understanding for a single woman. Exactly. Right? Like, like, like we teach you how to like date where you ask certain questions, right, from the very rip. You asking questions within the first date, second date to figure out if this guy's even making it to third date. And if he's not making it to third date, you cutting him off. I'm talking about he taught me how to block. Like I'm talking about second date. He didn't do nothing wrong. Block him. If he is not going to be in your regular rotation as a man you're going to marry and a man you're going to be with. You need to cut him off. So it might not be for the Marcy's of the world, but there's some women out here that's keeping men in their rotation because they're 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 falling short to the love bombing. They're falling short to the early sex activities. First of all, stop it's better sex. than him. It's better than think like a man. It's better than that. It's better than think like a man. He teach you how to date appropriately, where you're not necessarily sold into the idea that you're gonna find the man at the end of the book. But you're gonna stop dealing with the bullshit and the fuck buddies. Does that make sense? Yes, that gets well, to be too much. Because he he came in the building, he's trying to get in it. So sounds, sounds like it's, it really isn't. Uh, it, really really is like it really isn't. It actually is really good. It's it's actually how probably you might have dated in your past. Like men already date like this. A lot of men already date like this. Us women, the we one be a thing little that he said in the beginning was he did say that he said the the one thing he preaches to is. I'm gonna teach y'all how to date like men date. And it's not about finding a man. It's about, I'm gonna get these women. He's speaking to the Hold women. The next. Don't waste your time when someone's wasting your time. We tend to waste our time with men. Oh, he, he got three baby mamas. It's okay. He loved me, but he's cheating on you with everyone else. Sally Sue, this, that, and other around the corner. Like it's about, it's about letting go of that baggage. 
Yeah. I'll bring Big Exclusive in because he been waiting. He came through. Oh, my bad. Go ahead. The go door, on, baby, in the fall, fall. All you heard was popping on Amy no more. How do I do that? I'm trying to do this, Dante. All right, here we go. What's up, Big Exclusive? Welcome. <laughs> good evening, <laughs> ladies. Who passed that time evening. with wine? What you drinking first before you even? I should have done this with the other guests. Next time I'm gonna do that every single time. What you drinking? Uh, water, about a gallon. I'm doing a little detox. So I love it. I'm Ain't that wrong? A lot of that water. We yes, thank you. I appreciate that. Great show, ladies. I appreciate you guys bringing me on. Um, ugh. Mm. Okay, Marcy. Marcy on the roll tonight. Um, <laughs> so, exactly, Marcy. Exactly. That's what the book is about. We got to stop being monogamous, monogamous with men who are not monogamous with us. Like, we be committing to a man who never said that we were his girlfriend. And we be committing but, because he went on one date but, and he said, Your eyes are beautiful. Like, you got to, like, we, that's what the book that, is about. But is Those it your fault? About. Huh? No, 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 no. It is. And exactly. that's, that's the point. He, he takes more so, approach to so, kind of like help us unlearn things. Does that make sense? Right. So my 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 thing is, um, and, and I agree, think a Marcy, big part of the book. That's the point of the book. I think, I'm sorry, uh, but uh, uh, I, I think uh, uh, the problem and and something that you guys are missing is intent, right? I think. Um, we were speaking about, or, you know, I guess I was commenting about that guy's point of view about asking the woman to go Dutch. And I always say to, um, you know, most people I talk to when they talk about their experiences, I, you know, I always say we're the sum total of our experiences. And it sounds like he had some pretty bad experiences with dating women in that manner. Mm, now, right? I've personally never been on a date where a woman paid unless we were already in a committed relationship. And she decided that's what she wanted to do. And even then it was, you know, kind of made me feel, you know, a slight type way, but I appreciated it because I'd like to feel that I'm worth a meal as well. So I think a lot of times women um, don't date with the necessary intent. And I think those are the women that he was referring to. And because he don't know her well enough to understand and know where her intent is, he probably has that issue. Now, again, it doesn't matter if we go for a walk in the park, we sit on the park bench and have coffee, or we have water. You, you have to know what the intent is. I believe a lot of times, especially men after reading a lot of um, posts and all of that stuff, or looking through social media and seeing that 75% of women say that they go on dates just for the free meal. Like, guys, he, he may not have the finance to keep providing free meals, for women whose intent is not to date him deliberately, right? So for me, um, ultimately, you guys talk about the vetting process. I believe that starts with the very first conversation that you have with somebody. Um, it doesn't matter how you meet. It doesn't matter through what forum you guys meet. If the intent is to find somebody to be monogamous with or whatever style relationship you're looking for, if you go into it with that intent and you guys are having a conversation and you're on the same page, why would a guy ever mind paying for a meal for a woman? He wouldn't, Absolutely. right? But if he's consistently dating women who only get the free meal and then never call them again or doesn't show any interest or the conversation, even at dinner and the conversation is not going anywhere, meaning the questions that he wants, the questions he may be asking are answered in a manner where it's conducive to building on something. So I kind of understand his point of view um, and he, he, based off his experiences is probably why he feels that way. I just feel like we're missing the part about intent. Some women do that. I think y'all don't want to you know, take in consideration that some women date just to get a free meal, just to eat at the new hottest restaurant, just to go see what the hell State 48 is talking about and why everybody was tripping about it. So they just pick a guy and go out with him, get the free meal, have the experience, and have no intent on ever seeing that man again. Now, we my question is, at that point... Big Roll, Big Roll asked a question, not to cut you off, but this is can go in. I think we, I want to have this conversation about what Big Roll just asked. Ladies, 
Will y'all not go on a date with a man if he can't pay? Ladies who are listening live, drop in the chat your response to that question. If y'all- Yeah, I, I've decided I'm not doing it no more. Um, I used to do that. I used to prove that I was a ride or die and I would date. I have a lot of, a slew of broke men on my roster. Um, I've decided that I'm no longer doing that no more. I've proven to myself that I'm ride or die. That I that I care about you, but I'm gonna need you to be where I'm at. If I can afford to pay for myself on a date and go out on a date and take myself out, then I'm gonna need a man who can meet me where I'm at. So that's yeah, where let, I'm me, at. let me let me add to that, right? Like I think that's a really good question, and I think what Big Exclusive presented to us is having an open mind that there are men out there that might be dealing with some stuff that ain't got nothing to do with. But us. we addressed that in the beginning. Right. We but, shouldn't bring that into relationships. But we so were talking on. about the audience, right? I talked about the audience earlier. And I think what Le LeBre and I are dealing with in our situation, when we read that post, yo, I was we were on another podcast, right? Talking about like somebody was like, So you wouldn't date the guy running at Burger King. And I and I said, and I and I would live to this. The reason why is I dated him. I dated him. I spent 10 years in my 20s and early 30s. Dating different men and being open minded about exactly what big exclusive and some of the gentlemen are asking for us to be open minded about. Now, you might not be talking about me, but the reality of it is like I'm not necessarily talking about the women that you guys are talking about either. And I think that's sometimes a disconnect. You're running into women that might actually have dated that guy, invested in that guy. And I'll say this and I'll say everywhere I go. From my experience, when I date the guy, who is not at a place where he can financially afford me, financially afford himself, financially afford to just be like, you know what? I want to be a man and play the role and invest in this woman, right? When I've dated that guy, nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, actually, he was not whole. There are some other That's insecurities going on with this guy beyond just him being broke that correlates to him actually not having the self-esteem he needs to show up in other areas. So I've invested in this guy thinking like, oh, let me be the super saver hoe. Let me, let me not be tripping about this guy who can't pay for my meal. Let me not be tripping about this guy that can't do this. So let me invest my time in this guy. And these men that I have done this with, and, and don't tell me it's because I'm choosing the wrong ones because we talk about multiple men. The problem is it's a lot of black women out here. We've done this and we played this game, right? With multiple men and it turns out that, and it might not be you big exclusive, it might not be other men, but it turns out that these men are not whole because their lack thereof having makes them not have what they need self-esteem wise. So then they're the abusers, they're the beaters, they're the beaters, they're the ones that's just not there to, to show up the way I need to. So from my experience, I don't date those men because I've seen those men in areas where they let me down. What do you think, LeBray? Um, I agree. I want to address what Big Roll said. Big Roll had mentioned something saying that's, a, that's the reason why men are paying child support, but women are not when the dad stays with, when the kids stay with the dad. I want to say that's not true. I personally know that's quite a few women, quite a few women child support. Child support that father. Those niggas is and, taking and, women and, for and child they support. Actually, and they actually are um, sharing, um, sharing custody, but yet they're paying child support. So no, I don't no, agree with that. I got that. a friend right now, 50-50 custody. That's because he lied about his career and he never tried to move up in his career. He lied about and his side. Also he, also is said, taking, he is taking. I think, I think though, I think we, I think, I think, I think just to, we're kind of, you know, I know the conversation has, you know, branched off into some other things, but I think we kind of missing a point um of the whole text message i see why uh, a lot of women felt some type of way about that text message but again if you haven't walked in that man's shoes and had the experiences that he had his conviction is his conviction similar to right. what you just said crystal right. similar to your conviction with your experiences lebray i just don't think we can condemn people for having those experiences and they and the reality of it is they're not our experiences right it doesn't matter what the vetting process is. A lot of people, when you meet them, you run into their representation, right? And their intent is to get you to feel whatever kind of way they can get you to feel about them, regardless of what their personal situation is. 
because they have a level of like and or infatuation with you. So what we have to do as people who enter into the dating realm is make sure one, we are being upfront and honest and get rid of the representative. Cause I think that's, you know, yes. people fall for the representative yes. all the time. So yes. what we have to do, if we're going to be honest and date with transparency, get rid of the representative, walk into whatever the situation it is, no matter how you met with the honest intent to make sure you're being transparent. If you work at McDonald's, be fucking proud that you work at McDonald's. There's somebody out there who's going to accept you for that. If you're a six-figure nigga and you understand that you walk into something and you're looking for a co-wife or a, 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 a polygamous relation or understand, let her know up front that, yo, I'm not in it to be monogamous. I want to have the freedom to do other things. If you are a regular nine to five person, excuse the word regular or typical or average Excuse those terms uh, for lack of better terms, but if you are going into um, the process of dating and you are a regular average nine to five person and you know exactly what it is that you want and you can express that, and you can articulate that and that woman accepts that or that man accepts that, don't turn around and then throw that back in their face later when it doesn't kind of work out. And I see the comment that says date on your level but ultimately, that doesn't work either because I don't want to date somebody on my level. It doesn't matter if they're if, if if the assumption is they're above me or they're below me. I want somebody who can support me and help me grow and blossom into the human being that I ultimately want to be. That has absolutely dick to do with money, their career, or their status in society. It's everything to do with how they treat me how they make me feel. And some women and some men out here, when you date them, they will turn you into a completely let different me, person. And they're not going in it me. trying to change you. They're going into it like, yo, I support let this me. person because I feel some type of way about this person and I love this person and I want to help them grow. And in turn, that person is going to help you blossom into the person you want to be. So if y'all both started in reason. the mud at McDonald's, and y'all grow to own listen. 50 McDonald's, it didn't matter, did it? All, all facts. Let me ask you a question. Would you have texted that to that woman? Would you have you ever texted that to a woman? Let me just just no no other explanation. Have you ever texted and been in a situation where with all your experience and all your perspective, right? Because I respect what you're saying, right? Have you ever texted that to a woman that you have vetted and you 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 texting now about dating? Have you ever texted that to a woman? No, I've never texted so, that to one. All right, and that's the let's point. Let's pause for a second. Let's pause for a second, right? Everything you said is facts, though. Everything you said is facts, though. But what we need to understand is there are some things happening in the world that you're not the audience for. And there's a reason why you never text that to a woman, because but, you have But that's what I'm saying. You condemn his point of view, and that's not your experience. And it's not ours. Well, that's his not experience. I understand it. I got to respect it. I understand his point of view, but that's the point I'm I agree with what you're saying. You had said something about full transparency. So I think it's very important for that gentleman, whoever he was trying to date, for them to talk before they even go out. Because I mean, for me personally, I, I'm always asking questions. I get on my friend's nerves. I'm always asking questions. I would want to know the why. Why? What happened to you that made you um, that made you decide that you wanted to go Dutch on this date that we're potentially going to have? And we probably have a conversation about what happened, how he got hurt, what happened, and and then we get to that point for him to know that I'm not I'm not that person. That's the point I'm trying to make. I think that we got to come into relationships, yes, being take away that representative, being fully transparent. But I think it's also important for us to let go. We got to realize that what happened in our past is our past and that this new person may not be how that other person was. And I think it's very detrimental when we bring issues that we had with other relationships and we bring that into a current potential relationship. So that's the only point I'm making, but I, I understood where it's coming from. So me personally, knowing who I am, if I like that guy enough, although I'd be turned off that he even said that, I probably would ask him, hey, so what's going on? Like, why do you feel that way? Like, what's, what happened to you? And we would talk. And more than likely, he probably paying for that date going in the future because I'm going to pay, too. Like, it's not he'll know that I'm not trying to get his money. I wish that dating wouldn't be about monetary things. Because I agree with you. you had a comment about 
um, be on the same level. Although I think she met not just financial, I think she met in a lot of ways, not just financial. But let's speak about that. Um, why is it that we just limit dating on financial? Because there's more to dating than just about who pays, how much you make, this, that, and other. Although that's important, I guess. How about your but mindset? But that's the societal pressure that is put on everybody looking to date and or court. I've been on some dope ass dates that cost me absolutely nothing at all. Right? Exactly. So though, why are you asking that on the text then? I'm just saying it. Exactly. Listen, there's so many free dates. Let's go on a picnic. But, Let's but, take a but, walk but, on the beach. Like but, go but on. Crystal, I, I don't I don't I don't think that's fair because um most women like to be courted in a very specific way, right? It's either financially or is very romantically, right? So if maybe he's not creative enough to put something romantic together that doesn't really cost a lot of money. And then you can, can then, you can't be, that? go Before ahead. Before you go, go can ahead. I respond to that? Because I think, and I, maybe we might be missing something because for me, when I read that text, it's not that I automatically think, oh, he broke. Because Lamont, angry old head from the Bigger Susan podcast, shout out. <laughs> well, you need to doesn't necessarily mean that he can't afford it. That comment right there is the reason why I wanted to say this right now. I don't mean to cut you off, but like, like when he, if I was to read that text, I actually wouldn't be like, oh, he broke, he can't afford it. I wouldn't. I, that's not where my mind is at. Yeah, my exactly. mind is on. Why does boy even coming at me like that? All right, so he's not creative enough. He's not thinking in a way that I need him to think. So he ain't for me. He, he ruined it, and it has nothing to do with me thinking he can't afford it. Nothing. Mm. I think and I think in the comments, um, I, I think her name is Allegra. I think she hit it on the head, and I think that's more important than anything. She said, I don't know if I have the time because he sounds like he is still hurt. That, to exactly. me, is exactly. a much more, it's a much more compassionate response than okay. the, 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 the visceral venom that that text has been receiving across the mm. internet because I feel bad because people judging that man, and people are upset or women are judging him and upset about that. And we just don't know what that man experiences are. But like I said, I think Allegra hit it on the head. Like he's still hurting and he maybe shouldn't be dating anybody. Maybe he should be in therapy. But I also Agreed. like what the Bray said when she said, right. you know, it's why? why you know, she wanted to ask why, but I just don't think the initial response was compassion or understanding yeah. his point of view. I think this True. visceral venom, because it's okay in the social media and it's cool to dog him. And then we in this post Kevin Samuels world where all certain things about relationships tend to go back either old fashioned or financial. Or what can you do for Collins. me? So, go ahead. No, I want you to keep going. I just was like, I want to hold that text. Um, so let's come back to that one. I want to hold that, but go ahead. Yeah, so uh, I'm gonna get out of here because this is good, and I want to give somebody else an opportunity to offer their two cents. I like for you guys to not tell you how to run your show, <laughs> but I would like to hear you know a, a, an opinion um, from another lady. But again, just the end. Like my my advice, walking away. Is just be transparent, be honest, be deliberate, and make sure your intentions are the same as the person that you're dating. And I'll yes. leave that. I agree. With I that. appreciate you so much. We're gonna go ahead and get you out of here because you didn't did this to me too many Thank times. Thank you, ladies. Mic, mic, boom. <laughs> but you know what? Towards That's the awesome. end, actually, what I like about these type of conversations, I gotta stop and say this. I'm I have violin moments. Hopefully, my friends, Lebray. I see my girl out there in the audience, um, Rachel, listening. Hopefully y'all know this about me. I'll talk my shit all day, but I have violin moments where I'm, I'm still hearing what you're saying. And what I got from that is that I can have the opinion all day that I have, right? All day. Because my experience is not that man's experience, right? But I mm -hmm. need to understand and have compassion for what this man is is going through and i think i really got that i got that message like i'm not going to hate him for what he said but when i move forward in my situations i might not be able to respond to a guy like him the same it just doesn't mean that i hate this man because he came with that approach and that's what i right. learned from this from that conversation and and um clint collins says something that i just wanted to shout out because 
from from you and our perspective, Lebron, I think like we 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 definitely want to have compassion for the men that that have these issues, but we as women that have like I feel like I'm like Ali out in this bitch when it comes to like supporting men um in these type of scenarios. So I feel like that's where my, my perspective comes from. But Clint Collins said personally I feel like a man should pay for the regardless if he asked her out or not because he willingly agreed to go on a date. And I, and the reason why I wanted to point that out is I, I have some some level of, of of views that feel like there are certain things that a woman once she once you got her, she gonna give you the world and back. It's like a woman is going to a woman is biologically capable, like right, physically, emotionally capable of when you feed into her and you cover her and you give her and you tell her I'm investing in you because you the one. It's a rat. It's a fucking rat. So because I feel so strongly about that. Sometimes I do require, and I didn't always in the beginning, I think Marcy said earlier, you might want to check your vetting process. You damn right. When I was a little bit of a young pumpkin, like I wasn't doing it the right way, right? And now as I get older, I realize like if he can't invest in me because of what I've learned about the biology of men and the psychology of men, if he's not investing in me, we can go back and forth and, and go in circles all day. What I learned about men, if he ain't investing in me, he ain't the one because I'm going to give him all and back, but he has to invest to know that he's going to give me all and back. I just think that's the way men work. I ain't make the rules. I ain't make the rules. What you think, Gray? To be honest, I agree 100%. Like you've been, it's, it, it's as if like my mouth was moving as you were moving and like you were saying my words. Like I, I feel you. Um, I'm trying to think if I can add something to that. Um, it's just sad. It's just sad. But it's like we're, I, I always say this all the time. It's like we're sitting here trying to complain that the sky is blue. We look up, the sky is blue. We can't right. change the sky is blue. We can't change that we're in a society where we were we were raised in this patriarchal society that the men were ahead. That they word, court, yes, that, they, that they're going to court, that they're going to find the woman, that we're going to be the nurturers, that we're going to take care of the family. And although things are changing where we're quote unquote equal and, but I still feel like specifically in the black family, I only can speak on that. I feel like there's still this hierarchy where the man's the head and the woman is taking care of family, making sure the household is smooth. And with that being said, because we've been raised in that type of environment, that influence, or that's what we've been taught to believe, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's, it's not surprising that women are probably rejecting that text that we saw where the man, you know, said what he said. But at the same time, I think about my, uh, a friend that I had, um, a while ago, um, he had stated, we used to talk all the time. Um, and he stated that women sometimes don't always realize how tough it is for, for men when it, the pressure that they feel to perform, to be that provider, to, 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 um, to court. And um, and that that society puts on them, and I really would love to see the day where we, as black women and black men, can realize that that society society put that pressure on us. How about we decide to take away that pressure and together work together as a unit? Like, let's find a way that we can work together as a unit and not worry about what what happened. Your face. What happened, Chris? I just love what you said. That shit got me hot. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Oh, LeBray froze. She must be using Verizon or something. LeBray, you good? Am I froze or is she froze? Because I, I, y'all talk, type in the chat who frozen? Because I can't tell. She frozen on my end. Type in the chat if y'all can still hear me and see me. Okay. So I'm still in the building. So when LeBray come back, she's going to wrap up because she was saying a word. But so we're going to play this game, right? We're going to play this game. I want to like read these lyrics to y'all and I want to know who can guess the word. Um, guess guess the lyrics, and um, um, then you're gonna win a bottle of wine. But before I do that, right, Lebray was talking on some real stuff, and I just feel like, hold on, I'm trying to pick the song and multitask y'all. So Big Rose said, "Society got me looking at edges and lashes instead of booties and booties. Ooh, boobies and booties. Ooh, we're gonna talk about that, right? How how social media." and um media messaging overall affects mm, how we moving out in these streets Woo! 
that's a whole nother topic, the psychology of media and communications, right? Right, right? Big well, thanks for dropping that out there because that just keeps reminding me, man, big exclusive, we got to have that conversation soon. But um, media messaging definitely have effect about how have effect on us and how we move it. So that's later down the line, big, big, big stuff right there. But um, so hopefully the break coming back. I do want to um ask the audience uh, about a song, but I was trying to close out with a thought, and I totally lost my train of thought, y'all. Anyway, we're gonna go to the song. So I'm gonna give a bottle of wine, some Governor's Right White, a Virginia wine, okay? Shout out to Marcy. If you don't like it, it's okay, but I think you're gonna love it. Um. We're going to go ahead and read the lyrics. I need the first person in here to tell me what the, what song this is from. Okay? Let me know when you're ready. Type a one in the audience if you're ready. Type a one in the chat if you're ready. We're giving out a bottle of wine. I got plenty of wine left, Big Roll. Big Roll been picking on me all night. I ain't even finished my bottle. <laughs> Type a one in the chat if you ready We're giving out a bottle of wine I need y'all to tell me the name of the artist and the name of the song I was waiting for you Bray to come back But now that you're back, we're going we're gonna to do this right quick And then go back to your closing statement Because that was lit lit you, I had chills, boo I'm so sorry like, no, it's, it's, it's funny okay. how like It's okay it's funny Hold how on, let me read this works. right quick Let me read this right quick, we're going to come back to you, you good, boo It's Friday night and the weekend's here And I need to unwind, where's the party? I'm ready to call my friends so we can, can all get down. Where's the party? Who got that? It's Friday night and the weekend's here. I need to party. I'm ready to call my friends so we can uh, so we can get down. Where's the party? I need this. I need the. I need the song and the artist. I need the song and the artist. We're gonna do this every time we live. It's gonna get harder and harder. Whoa! I, come on now. Come on now, I got I got mixed responses. I need the song and the artist. Oh man, Rachel, I'm disappointed. Janet Jackson, though. <laughs> That's my old school girl right there. She love. All right, we're gonna give it to Tiffany, even though she ain't playing a game, right? She's gonna write it in two different statements. So that's Zane. Hey, Mr. DJ. Yo, I was so before the podcast, right, y'all? Let me tell y'all. I was like, yo, I'm a little nervous. I ain't never did this live before. I've been doing radio for years. You know what I'm saying? I did radio in college. Um, we've been taping podcasts, and I'm just like, I'm about to go live. I ain't never did nothing, nothing like this before. So I put on Zane. I put on Zane and I started vibing out. And let me tell y'all, if y'all ain't listening to Zane in a minute, I need y'all. To listen to Zane. So I'm gonna give it a tip because she definitely posted she 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 fucked up the rules a little bit because <laughs> she posted twice, but it's all good. I'm gonna give it a tip. And thank you, Clint Collins. I know you I know you was next. Um, but um, I'm gonna th- I'm gonna throw that to, to tip. But you know what? I'm gonna give a bottle to, to, to Clint Collins and Tiff because I already promised Tiff a bottle. So two bottles of governor's right, white Williamsburg wine is going out. Y'all, when y'all hang up from Passing Town Wine after LeBray and we close this out, I need y'all to go listen to Zane because it had me three, four songs in y'all. I was in a whole vibe. Go ahead, LeBray. What you got before we go to this closing? Oh, okay. I said it wrong. How, how do you pronounce that name? Oh, Angry Old Head checking me already. How you pronounce their name, LeBray? Did I say it wrong? What it, what it, What's going on? You said that's not how you pronounce their name. I thought it was Zane. Oh, how do you pronounce it then? I thought what it was Zane. Is it too. Name? What is it? What is that? It's name? Zane. It's Zane. You're talking about the person who, who was in this group, um, One what Direction, and they went solo? And they went solo? Which Zane are you talking about? Like, there's another Friday one. Night, wait, wait, wait. It's Friday night and the weekend's hit. LeBron, you the singer. So we can. What? A oh, girl, don't, I'm one of those people who like make up their own li- their own lyrics to songs. So, nah, I'm not the oh, one for that. One. I would have failed that. One. No, <laughs> real, real that. talk though, I've been listening to them all my life, and I ain't never. I always call them Zane. How's it pronounced? Somebody said Shane. I don't freaking know, but go ahead. Ah, <laughs> well, hey, we learn something new every day, right? <laughs> every day. 
great. So before we go to the closing statements, um, I don't know if you wanted to finish up your thoughts before you got cut out. What would I say? Because I was going in until I realized my internet connection was like not let me be great. So I don't even know where I was at. You got to get with the other stuff. But no, it's all good. Whatever I said and y'all heard, that was meant to be heard. Whatever wasn't, you know, it just didn't manifest itself at this point. I'm good. Like, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. I The, the conversations were great. Um, the only thing I want to leave with the audience is just like, I, oh, it's just about the black man and the black woman. I want us to work together as a unit. I just get so tired of us like going back and forth and we can go deep into it and figure out the psychological, you know, ramifications of slavery and how that's passed down in our mindsets to mindset in every generation. We can do that. Let's not. But I, well, you know, let's do like what I'm trying to say is, is that we got to recognize the fact that we all went through trauma generations ago. We all went through trauma and that affects how we are right now. The black man was taken from the family and the black woman had to be the head of the family, take care of everything. And I just, but at the same time, we don't want to. I think sometimes men be thinking we want to like head everything and, and not let them be men. We 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 want you to, boo. We want you to lead. We want us to, to come together as a family unit. So I would just say, I just want to encourage everyone. Like that's one thing I will say, I like what biggest biggest have said about knowing where that man's coming from, showing compassion. I think on each side, we should all show compassion on each side, men and women. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Man, I just got chills. That was good, Bray. I'm just tripped out that angry old head still talking about Zane in the chat. <laughs> we, 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 we'll get a better time. It's Zane. It's spelled Zane. It's spelled Zane. Yeah, we pass the time wine, okay? We pass the time wine. I appreciate you, boo. <laughs> so I think we're going to close out with a little video, and I hope you guys hang for the video because one thing, I woke up this morning and I said, Bray, I want to really just like share a video that inspired me this morning. And it's not really directly uh, um, associated with all the things that we talked about. So when we drop, hang for this video. We'll come back one more time to say bye. Um, but watch this video. I'm I'm totally like just completely I like filled with inspiration for our people and 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 helping us, you know, just find ways that we can um just just be different in all areas, whether it's finances, relationships, money, organization, whatever. So anyway, I was watching this video this morning and I was like, I'm really inspired by that. But anyway, so we're gonna share that as a closer. But I'll say all you said was real good. I'm just going to save a deep one for like next week. I'm just going to say, you know what I'm looking for, Bray? What? I want a man who's as intellectual. No, no, no. Who's as sensual as the Tupac that wrote a rose that grew from concrete. Pause on that one for a second. I want the sensual man who's as sensual as Tupac when he wrote a rose that grew from concrete. I want... A, a man with business sense, because I'm taking y'all somewhere else. I know I'm changing the subject, but I, we passed the time once, so I can do that. So y'all got to find a man to do her requirements right now. Help her find a man. I'm giving you the floor. I'm giving you the floor. I'm giving you the floor. He is at, his business sense is as thorough and on point. His street, street, his street vibe is as accepted as Nipsey Hussle. Woo. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what, you got to praise the Lord right now? Who is Lord, child. <laughs> and then his um soul oh my god moves me like bob morley okay it moves me like bob morley and his intellect his present is 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 a 19 keys i was talking about 19 keys in the beginning of this show who is this 19 keys i gotta look him up right now Google him. So, you've been talking about him for like a month now i gotta look him up 19 keys it's just 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 brains it's just like you got a white you know what I mean? It's just thinking. You know what I mean? Like, I need somebody that's thinking. So you ain't tripping about whether we going Dutch or not. You just thinking about other shit. Yes. You know I mean? Don't trip. trip. Don't trip. I'm going to have compassion, I promise. I'm going to have compassion, but that text wouldn't even came through because, you know what I mean? Like, you radiate on a different level, and, and, and that's just where I'm at with it. But we out here. Um, we're going to come back and say goodbye for those who still hanging around. Um, I want to appreciate everybody that listened in tonight. I want to say shout out to a big exclusive podcast that is just like honestly amazing inspiration for us and what you're doing over there. So please, if anybody that's watching that don't watch the big exclusive podcast, 
You can search them on all um, streaming platforms from Facebook to um, YouTube and Instagram. Sorry if I'm wrong, but um, Big Exclusive Podcast. Shout out Angry O'Heads in the freaking building. Big Roll, man. Big Roll. I like you, Big Roll. You just be like, I like Big Roll. Like, all up in it. He just, I like uh, he just all right. That's okay, too. I like them all. They funny. I like them all. I like them all. Rachel just shouted out, said she like her sweet wines. Okay. We, were talking about that we got that coming. Rachel, I was talking about our Riscato. We love some Riscato. I talked about that. Like, yes. Yeah. We love yes, our yes, sweet yes. wines. I got two bottles of wine going out. One to um um to Tiff, and I'm going to send one to um a Clint Collins. Clint Collins is actually listening from California, y'all. Uh, he yeah, he was on YouTube. He was on Instagram at first, and so he switched over to Facebook. So we yeah, we truly okay. appreciate. Shout out to Olympus Studios, Andre McNeil. He's the photographer. If y'all have been looking at our page, we have some bomb photos. We're gonna still share some more. We haven't shared all the photos he took. He took some really phenomenal photos, and he's a great photographer. So if you're looking for somebody who gives you headshots, who um, can do maternity shoots, who can just you know, if you just want a model shoot, whatever. He's good at all. Oh, he he also does high fashion. Olympus, O L Y M P U S Studios. And yeah, um, look him up. Andre McNeil on yeah. Facebook is his name. Andre yeah. A N D R E McNeil and Olympus Studios. Yeah, shout out to him. He definitely did a great shoot with us. And I don't know if y'all saw some of the shots, but we were like completely naked in some of those shots. <laughs> Yes, and we were bare naked, special. bearing our souls, being transparent. That's what we're. This is what this podcast is about. Okay, as we pass on. So next time we're gonna show up. Yeah, we're gonna show up next time naked in our next episode. It's like I'm playing. We're not doing that. But um, <laughs> we all want to know when that album dropping, yo. Lebray, when that album? Lebray's no, actually. I'm excited favorite. that that album is. It's already done, right? But I'm a perfectionist, and I need to make sure everything's right. And I'm also insecure, so I'm, I'm being transparent here. Because my transparency, I'm insecure, and I want to make sure that everyone likes it. So, with that being said, I'm posting that shit in January. My birthday's coming up in January, so I've decided that's happening because it's already done. We're just we're just editing, we're just um, mastering everything, making sure everything's together. So that album's coming out in January. So stay tuned as we post it. It'll be on Past Time of Wine. It'll be on my page, everything. So thank you for asking. Um, so follow My Thoughts Could Be a Blog, LeBray Tyler, also on Instagram and us on Facebook, of course, Past yes. Time of Wine. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please subscribe. We're going to actually have this um, uploaded on all platforms. More to come. We got lots of clips of old episodes that we taped as well coming. A lot of good stuff in store. A lot of people said keep going. Like, we're going to keep going. So please support, share, comment, do all that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to leave y'all with this last little with this last little inspirational uh, video, and then we'll be back to say bye for like two seconds. But um, stay on watch, and um, thanks, th thanks, thanks for viewing us. And go Thank ahead and drop that, in. that that final video, Dante, please. Following up on what we're saying, just said about the road. The road to success is not straight. There's a curve called failure, loops called confusion, speed bumps called friends, and red lights called enemies. Caution signs called family, and flat tires called jobs. But if you have a spear called determination and an engine called perseverance with insurance called fit and the drive to make it, you'll reach a place called success. If you got the drive to make it, you'll reach that thing called success. Lots of things that there's accent was so heavy, but I ran across that this morning. You know what I mean? There's all types of speed bumps and distractions in life, y'all. Um, from family to friends to jobs, all types of headaches, you know what I mean? But if you got that drive for success, you know what I mean? Like you would make it. Um, LeBray started this, this podcast by saying, well, what, what was that you said, Crystal? Well, what this is, is a thought became a thing. You know, we sat here for some months during the pandemic, just having wine chats and, and, and talking about what wines we loved and doing video chats when the pandemic first dropped. I don't know where y'all were at, but drop it in the chat before we roll out where you was at during the pandemic. But when I got work from home orders and LeBray got work from home orders, we was like, hey, every every, every Thursday night, let's, let's, let's get on some video and let's talk. And we was just, just chatting it up and, 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 and talking about our, our love for wine and talking about all the things that's happening in the world and what we were going through emotionally and all that good, other good stuff. And a thought became a thing. Here we are. So if you got that drive, cause that drive for success, you know, let your thoughts become reality and just go ahead and manifest. Shout out to Clint Collins. If y'all haven't actually like, like, anybody that's in the chat, Clint Collins is actually a rapper. And I wasn't going to say this. It just dawned on me. He posted something the other day. He was like, man, I can't believe it's been three years. 
And I looked at him, and I didn't catch him when he first posted it three years ago, but he has this amazing music video out. Oakland rapper, killing it. There's a lot of us out here in the world doing great things. And just because we're not in mainstream, it doesn't mean that our, our gifts and our talents aren't worth viewing. So if you have a second, please go follow Clint Collins on Facebook. Um, he's awesome. Please type in the chat. I can't remember what your Instagram name is, but he's an Oakland rapper. Like He could be as good as a Nipsey Hustle. you know what I mean? As big as a Nipsey Hustle, I should say. But the problem is sometimes, you know, we don't have those platforms. So long story short, we're all doing big things. So congrats to everyone. Pat yourself in the back. We love y'all. Thank you so much for so supporting our dream. LeBray, what you got? I already said it before, but I'll say it again. I truly appreciate y'all. I The wine is starting to kick in, okay? So just so y'all know, this is probably going to be a theme. I'm going to start off really intellectual and very proper, but towards the end, I might get a little ratchet. It's okay, though, okay? Um, I really, truly appreciate you guys tuning in to Passing Time with Wine. This is our baby. We love it so much, and uh, we truly appreciate you guys being engaged in our conversation. We can talk a lot, okay? We can talk a lot. And Allegra, I'm shouting you out. Girl, I appreciate you, you tuning in to this. Rachel, thank you so much for tuning in. Everybody from the Big Exclusive Podcast. Hey, yo, my sister listening tonight. That's my Everything. Sis. Oh, and your, your sister, everybody, like um, Marcy, Tiff. I can't even shout out everyone. Mike, that was my old contractor. Um, Everybody, just thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We not posting next week, but we're posting the following week. Every other Thursday at 7 o'clock, we are going to be posting all the time. So please stay tuned. We truly appreciate you guys. And please, pass time with wine. Cheers. Cheers. We got that music coming for you, Clint.